If you enjoy our videos and want to see more of them, head on over to our Eons of Battle Patreon. Welcome back, my ghouls and ghoulettes. I'm glad you weren't scared away by our first spooky video. Halloween is fast approaching, and we're going to need to paint this diorama in record time. <laughs> there are a few things on my side to make this painting project less daunting. It's a small diorama. Flocking like static grass and scale leaves are going to take a lot of painting weight off my shoulders, and I'll be painting the focal point of the model, who I'm calling Pumpkinhead, separately. With that said, it's going to be a long night, so I have my wet palette ready, my paint standing by, and my hollow wine ready and waiting. <laughs> One thing to think about is what colors will I use? And the nice thing is, I don't have to make it up. I can just look at my mood board. Now it might seem silly to look at it and compare it to my diorama now, because superficially there's not much in common, but these photos caught my attention for a reason, and I want to get myself back to when I was selecting them. I threw my slides onto a color picker, which showed me a breakdown of the colors in my collage. It's not quite a color scheme, but it does show what colors not to use. It's really interesting to look at these colors all lined up next to one another, and it's just one more point for the mood board as a tool for generating ideas. <laughs> Alright ladies and gentle ghouls, it's time to start painting. First, I am priming the model black with my airbrush, and actually for this piece, I would prefer a rattle can because it's so big. But, it's not all about size, and I had it finished in no time. After priming, I do a Xenothal highlight with some white primer. Did you know that Xenothal highlight comes from the astronomy word zenith, meaning the point when the sun is directly above the observer? So, Xenothal highlight is pre-shading where light is coming directly from above. Who knew? Now I am using some inks through my airbrush, spraying lightly over my pre-shading so that each flat plane in my diorama has a pop of light on it to bring attention to the pumpkins sitting on it. To start to make my dirt look like dirt, I put some burnt umber ink through my airbrush. I am spraying this on all of the vertical surfaces on my model so that they resemble exposed earth. Ink through the airbrush is really nice over a zenithal highlight because it's very transparent. Now, working with black ink, I am spraying this just underneath all the flat landings on the base to make them stand out more. Next, I make myself a nice homemade wash. I want to knock down the color a lot, and the wash is the fastest way to do it. A wash will also bring out the texture that I made in my diorama. The wash is made with black ink, matte medium, alcohol, and plenty of water. I probably could have added more water to make it a little less strong, but it's hard to tell what a wash will do while it's still wet. Next, I do just a little dry brushing. I mix together some Vallejo Earth with Vallejo Stonewall Gray and I dry brush the entire model. A blush makeup brush works really nice for this and it's a lot cheaper than hobby dry brushes. Lastly, for dry brushing, I brush some Stonewall Gray onto the tree to make it look a little bit more dead. Now it's time to paint my spooky pumpkins. For these guys, I decided to redo their zenithal highlight just so that they would pop out more. It might be a better idea to leave them darker, but I like them, and I want them to cut through the diorama a little bit more. I had to be a surgeon with the airbrush to not get any paint on areas of the diorama that were not the pumpkins. To take advantage of the zenithal on the little pumpkins, I mixed a 50-50 of Vallejo Chocolate Brown, which is my favorite and tastiest brown, and P3 Kador Red, which is an orange. I then mixed in a healthy amount of matte medium to make my paints transparent. Then I base coated the whole pumpkin. Then I worked back and forth adding brown paint to the pumpkin's creases and orange paint to the faces, using my matte medium to make my paint thinner.
Lastly, I switched to P3 Ember Orange to do some final highlighting to the model. Then I painstakingly painted all the jack-o'-lantern faces white, and boy oh boy should I have done this first, because now I have to worry about getting white on my beautiful paint job. Once it's dry, I painted on some fluorescent yellow ink to really make their faces stand out. Then I put a little bit of brown ink on the pumpkin stem and the tree. And I cannot forget about this little owl. I just picked out his eyes with some white paint and then dotted them with some black. Now onto the corn. I primed them white, base coated with chocolate brown, and then I did some spraying of Vallejo Earth. Then I finished them off with some bone white to make them look dry and crunchy, as fall corn stalks should. I glued these suckers into place with a dollop of super glue. These gave me some really nice Children of the Corn vibes. Boo. Now it's time to paint Pumpkinhead. I primed him black, this time it makes sense to use an airbrush, and I gave him a nice Zenithal with some white primer. I love the attitude of Reaper miniatures, they sure know how to pack some character into their minis. He's holding his head in his hands as if in pain, but it looks like he's really happy about something. Something evil is afoot in this pumpkin patch. Next, I painted his little shirt. I'm using some Vallejo Earth mixed with matte medium to make it a little bit more transparent. When painting small stuff, it might seem like you need your tiniest brush, but really, you should always use the biggest brush you can comfortably use. It really speeds things up. After that, I used chocolate brown watered down to shade areas of his cloak. As my layers of chocolate dried, I added more to further darken my shadows. Now I'm painting a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Earth and Vallejo Bone White. Here I am doing the opposite of the shadows, I am painting on the highlights. I am putting this mixture on all the raised parts of his cloak. And now for some final highlights with some pure bone white. This is really going to draw the eye and will make his cloak look like a tattered old potato sack. Then I used some Games Workshop Lead Belcher to pick out his four little buttons, and then it was time to paint his enormous head. And this time, I'm not making the same mistake twice. I'm painting his eyes white first. And now I'm painting his head orange with the same 50-50 mix of Kador Red and Chocolate Brown I used earlier on my pumpkins. Mixing in plenty of matte medium to take advantage of my Zenithal highlights. And now I'm painting on some chocolate brown into his creases. Now, Pumpkinhead's pumpkin head is looking a little light on detail, so I used my brown to add in some more ridges to fake in more texture than is really there. I added two more ridge lines around his face. Now, I just kept painting watered down orange until I was happy with the results. I also let this splash over the brown a little bit to blend the colors together. Then 
finally, I used some P3 Heartfire Yellow to further accent the idea of pumpkin ridges on his head, even though they're not really there. As I paint on stripes of yellow, it looks as if there is a texture that is being hit by the light, when really, he just has a big Charlie Brown head. He does sort of have a chocolate brown head. Now, to finish off my little buddy, I paint all his green bits, his little pumpkin stem, and his spooky arms. I started with some Games Workshop Wog Flesh, which is a surprisingly good Halloween green. Then I did some highlighting with some Vallejo Sick Green. And then I did a final highlight on all of his green parts with a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Sick Green with some P3 Hellfire Yellow. Then I threw some yellow ink into his eyes. Pumpkin Head is sculpted with a little bit of a base, so I just painted those areas black. Boo. Now my little pumpkin buddy joins his friends in the spooky pumpkin patch. Now it's time for the really fun stuff, flocking. This is going to do wonders for the diorama, and it's really easy too. Guys, I bought this Green Stuff World Leaf Punch for this project, and I cannot stop making things into leaves. It's so much fun. I have not found the perfect way to replicate real leaves. I suspect coffee filters, but for now, real leaves will have to do. I have these green tufts that I will stick around my diorama with some super glue to keep them in place. Tufts are the easiest way to add some class to a model. Then I mixed some dark green flock and some sandy colored flock to make my October grass mix, trademark pending. Then I took some Elmer's glue and applied patches of it to the base with a damp brush. Then I used some tweezers to apply my flock. I punched out enough leaves for the model and I baked them at 300 degrees for about 20 minutes. I was hoping this would brown them, but really it just made them crispy. They still look good though, and I poured them onto my diorama using clear Elmer's glue to stick them down. This was the most fun part of the whole diorama. Basically from now on, everything I make will have leaves. Boo. Now it's time to paint the spooky sky. I prepared my piece of styrene plastic by sanding it with some very fine grit sandpaper, and I wiped it clean with some alcohol. Then I primed it with some black primer. Again, I would have liked to use a rattle can, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. I quickly traced where the backdrop meets the diorama, so I would know where to add my paint. Then I base coated the sky with some Vallejo Game Color Royal Purple. Then at the top of my sky, I airbrushed on some Vallejo Game Color Bloody Red to make the sky look like California. Then I took a piece of cotton and sprayed some P3 Kador Red, which is an orange, to make it look like the setting sun is reflecting off of some spooky clouds. In my diorama, it's nighttime and the stars are out. I put some very watered down gray into my airbrush and set the pressure to basically nothing. This makes the paint come out in a splatter, perfect for random stars. Then to make my dark clouds, I went back to my cotton, but this time I sprayed with Vallejo Royal Purple. Then I added some more stars, and it's time to make the moon. The easiest way to draw a circle is to trace something that already exists. Then I carefully cut it out with my hobby knife. I then put my template on the model, and I sprayed some white primer to make my moon. I tried to make my gray moon texture with the cotton, and it sort of worked. Perhaps a used dryer sheet would have worked better. I finished off with the gray, just freeballing it with the airbrush. Then to finish my moon, I sprayed some white speckling the same way I made the stars. Then I sprayed a very watered down coat of P3 Heartfire over my moon. Now all that's left is to glue it to the model. I scraped off some paint to get a nice plastic bond, scored it on some super glue, and attached it to the back of my spooky diorama. Boo. And here it is in all its glory, Pumpkinhead coming to life in the middle of his spooky pumpkin patch. 
I'm so happy to have this little slice of Halloween that I can take with me all year round while I wait impatiently for next Halloween. And now I would like to read you the poem that inspired this whole project. Ahem. Keep away from Pumpkinhead unless you're tired of living. His enemies are mostly dead, he's mean and unforgiving. Laugh at him and you're undone, but in some dreadful fashion. For vengeance he considers fun, he plans it with a passion. Time will not erase or blot a plot in which he's brewing, and when you think that he's forgot, he'll conjure your undoing. Bolted doors and windows barred and guard dogs prowling in your yard won't protect you in your bed. Nothing will from Pumpkinhead. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.